Welcome to the Back to Basic series. In this episode, we're going to discuss mindfulness, food, and women. And this is a repost from original episode 194. And this is our last episode to Back to Basic. We'll be back with brand new episodes starting next week. We are taking a break from creating original episodes for the Beyond the Food show for the period of July 2020, while we work and concentrate our creative juices to create a revolutionary project, something that will change life and change the industry. And this will be coming forth in August 2020. To be the first to know about the secret project, join the waitlist at stephaniedozier.com slash coming or use the link in the show notes. The Back to Basics series is brought to you by BetterHelp Online and that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, you know, my French accent. BetterHelp is an online counseling service provider that I have been using personally for my own healing over the last few months. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. I can log in to my account anytime, send a message to my counselor. I can schedule video and phone session at my own convenience. And the reason why I love BetterHelp is for their commitment to great therapeutic match. And if it doesn't work for you right away with the first match, you can change counselor at any time. And because it's online, it is more affordable than traditional offline counseling, plus financial aid is available. If you think this can help you in your journey beyond the food, I've arranged with better help for a 10% discount for our community member. All you have to do is use our unique URL when visiting BetterHelp for the first time. So that URL is betterhelp.com slash beyond food. And again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P. I hope this serves many of you. Ready? Let's talk about food and being mindful. Hello, sisters. Stephanie here. Nice to be back with you. Today is June 25th, and it's the start of summer in North America. Like the temperature are climbing. All people are talking about is family vacation, trips, beach, and water. I know for myself, I've renewed my national park cart. So I love nature. And I have one that's close by, like literally 10 minutes away from me. I have a national park. So I renewed my card. It's the third year in a row. I like to go there three times, four times a week, even take picnics. There's a beach, there's water. It's a great place to be. And and I'm also a history lover, for those who don't know that. So I'm planning not only to go to national park, but also to go to old Quebec, If you have no clue what I'm talking about, whole Quebec City, it's one of the first settlements of European in North America, and it's a city that's 484 years old. Crazy, right? It was settled in 1535, and a small chunk of that city is still a place that you can visit. So there's cobblestones and old buildings. So yeah, I'm going to go spend a couple days there as well this summer, and I think my love for history also is the reason why I love mindfulness and why mindfulness, when I found it about 10 years ago, was such a big part of my healing journey. And when I either visit spaces or go to country that have more history, what I notice is that there's a lot less disturbance in historical environment that there is in very modern downtown type of city center. And I think because I've been practicing mindfulness for almost nine years now, I love silence. I love quietness way more than this busy lifestyle. And you know, you would have met me 20 years ago and I would have not even consider going into a space that was quiet. Like I was the hip downtown party club, loud music type of girl. And 20 years later, it's the complete opposite. 
who's with me on this? Is that you too? So that's the place where I am in this world right now. And as I shared with you, mindfulness has been a the biggest new segment of my life that has impacted my healing journey with food and body. And that's why mindfulness is now integrated in all of our program, our signature program, which includes everything we do that going to be on the food Academy teaches like different layers of mindfulness from the way we set our goals to simple breathing technique to the meditation, which by the way, meditation is not mindfulness, two different things, but meditation is a vehicle for you to be more mindful. So it's part of everything that I do now, both work and professionally. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what is mindfulness and what it's not, because there's a lot of core belief around mindfulness out there in our community, which prevents women from actually embracing mindfulness and healing their relationship to food and body. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the link between mindfulness and food. We're going to talk about why women benefit more from mindfulness than men and how to be more mindful in your life, an easy way to incorporate mindfulness in your life. So let's start with what is mindfulness and what it's not. Being mindful and that's how we call it, being mindful. It's basically a state of being, of consciousness, or awareness of something. Mindfulness suggests that the mind is fully attentive to what is happening in the moment, to what you're doing, to the space you're moving through. So right now, if you're driving, right? Are you present to the road in front of you? Are you looking at the road? Are you feeling the seat below your bum? Are you feeling the driving wheel in your hand? Perhaps you're feeling and being present and mindful to the air conditioning running in your car. Because perhaps it's summer where you are. That's being mindful. So you are mindful. Mindfulness is a part of the human body, the human mind. It's part of us. Just like being an intuitive eater is part of us. We have that running in all of us right now. However, along the way, dieting came in and kind of took us away from being an intuitive eater. Being a mindful person is normal. Look at your kids. Look at little toddlers around you. That's all they do. They discover their environment. They touch everything, right? And the first thing toddlers do, perhaps maybe more babies or in between babies and toddlers, is bring everything to their mouth. Why? Because somehow at that stage in their life, their mouth is their vehicle of feeling touching, right? So as a mom or a sitter or caregiver, you run around baby proofing your house because you know that your child will be mindful of everything they can bring to their mouth because they want to experience it. That's mindfulness in action. So simply said, mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present of where we are, what we're doing, and not being reactive or overwhelmed with what's going on around us and within us. Because when we are mindful, we get to manage our thinking and our emotion much better. When we're not mindful and we are either in the past or the future, because when we're not in the present moment, There's only two other places where we can be. We can be in the past, and typically that's, quote, depression, right? When someone is depressive is that they're not in the present moment. They're in the past, ruminating. And then anxiety is being in the future, worrying about what's in front of us. So instead of being in the present moment of driving your car and listening to me, yes, you, (laughs) yes, you, Perhaps you're thinking about what's waiting for you at home. 
Perhaps you're thinking about everything you got to do before the vacation, or perhaps you're thinking about the negative interaction you had with a coworker at work today, or perhaps with your kids and you're ruminating, perhaps being resentful, angry, jealous. All of that is because you're not mindful. If you were in the present with your wheel, with your car, with my voice, you would not experience the emotion that were present in the past or the future, right? And you wouldn't be ruminating. You would be experiencing the present moment. That's why when you're being mindful, there's a lot less reactive action to unpleasant emotion, because most of the unpleasant emotion come in the present moment and then they go. We bring them back by being in the past or we imagine them, these negative emotion, what could potentially go wrong by being in the future. In the present, those emotions aren't there. I hope I make sense. Now, what is mindfulness is not Mindfulness is not meditation. So let's get that clear right off the bat. Mindfulness is not meditation. Meditation is a vehicle, a tool, an activity that will help you become more mindful. But it's not mindfulness. Mindfulness is not what we think. It's what we experience. Mindfulness is not about being attentive It's about being present in the way to which you are curious versus judging, right? So you're holding the wheel right now. Are you feeling the letter perhaps of the wheel on your hand? Or are you judging it because it's too hot? It's too cold. Perhaps there's no letter. It's just plastic. It should be letter. Get what I'm saying? That's judging versus being curious. It's just feeling the sensation of the letter on your hand. Mindfulness is not about being perfect because there's not one human being on the planet that's fully present and mindful at every single minute of the day. Well, let me take that back. Perhaps if you're a monk on the top of a mountain and your only job is to meditate and being present at every single minute of the day, that's their job. That's what they do. Unless that's you. Mindfulness is not perfection. Mindfulness is not about changing your thoughts or avoiding feeling. We're not practicing and being mindful to not experience our feelings. It's about not judging them and not attaching to them, to these feelings. Mindfulness is not about being silent. And that was a huge thing for me. I still remember the first time that I tried to practice mindfulness And I got really angry at myself because I assume that if I was mindful, I would not have any chatter in my head. So within five minutes of me attempting to be more present, I got myself so frustrated that I quit right off the bat. And I went back to my coach and said, this is not working for me. I'm different than everybody else. I can't do this because my mind won't stop. Is that you? I hear that a lot when I teach mindfulness, right? So get get that out of the way. Mindfulness is not about being silent. It's not about thinking. It's about you being present with the thoughts and the emotion without judging them. Mindfulness is not difficult, Because it's part of us. So for all of you who've hesitated of practicing mindfulness because you're thinking it's too hard, the good news is it's inside of you. It's on autopilot right now. You just got to put more gas to the pilot so it becomes something that is present within you. Mindfulness is not religion. Now, this is something that I do come across in my signature program and particularly with certain branch and certain religion in which... It is said that being mindful or being in a meditative state, practicing meditation, which again is not mindfulness, but a tool to get there, is against religion. So I don't want to comment more on this. I had one of my graduated students actually write a complete article on this. The student is a leader in the Christianity 
religion and a teacher in that religion as well. And she did our program and I'm going to link to that in the show notes. So stephaniedoze.com slash 194. So if that's a struggle for you, go read this article. So bottom line is mindfulness is not religious. And the last one, big misconception is that mindfulness is only about stress reduction. Now, mindfulness is about how we live our life and stress is part of our life. Mindfulness does not remove stress. Mindfulness teaches us to change our relationship to stress, to our emotion, to things that happen in our life so we don't become negatively impacted by it. When you become mindful, problem, mistakes, other people issue don't stop happening in your life. They still happen, you still experience them, but you don't react in the same way. Therefore, you create less stress in your life. So these are the main blockers that people have when it comes to mindfulness. Now, what is the link between mindfulness and food? Because the title of this show is Women, Food, and Mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply the act of being present with our eating experience. Just like you're being present to holding the wheel, sitting on the seat, watching the street or the highway in front of you, you are being present to the eating experience. So you are being present to the taste of food, the color of the food, the whole putting the fork in the mouth. Now I got to say, mindfulness is the number one most powerful step towards healing your relationship to food. No matter what is disagreeable with your relationship to food, mindfulness will repair it. And probably one of the most effective and surprising consequence of mindfulness is with binge eating or overeating or compulsive eating experiences that folks have. When they start learning mindfulness and they start practicing it, with a binge, a compulsive moment of eating, the number one feedback I get is, well, the food didn't even taste good. Or I got full only halfway through the back of chip. Normally I would eat the whole thing and still want more. Now that I practice mindfulness, like after half the bag, I feel sick. I don't want it anymore. That's the power of being present with the eating experience because we know that when you binge and binge eating disorder being a recognized status of health, it's being researched. We have more data around it. And we know that when people binge, they're not mindful. They're not in their body. They're either in the past or in the future. So I'm kind of applying that to compulsive eating as well and overeating being that there's no research behind it, I experienced it myself as being not present with my food. So when you learn mindfulness and you apply it to food, then you resolve overeating, you resolve binging, compulsive eating, reactive eating behavior of any kind. There's research that also suggests that distraction during a meal perhaps doesn't lead to overeating and binging, but leads to an increased food intake. May not be categorized as overeating, but part of it leads to more. Why? Because when you're not present with food, you don't feel satisfaction. Finding satisfaction is a cornerstone of intuitive eating because part of our relationship to food is pleasure, and it's satisfaction. So when you're not present, you don't taste the food, you don't enjoy the food, you seek for that pleasure somewhere else or in higher quantity of food. Mindful eating is a precursor to intuitive eating, meaning that being mindfully present with your food is part of intuitive eating. Now, the most effective way that I've experienced teaching mindful eating as part of intuitive eating is with our five senses. So 
here's what I want you to do. If you want to be more mindful when you eat, I want you to pay attention to your five senses. So I want you next time you eat to put the stencil down and to look at food. Use your sight as a senses. So pay attention to the color, the shape, the plate that it's on, the environment around the food. Like take a scan for a minute with your eyes of the experiment environment around food. Then I want you to move to your nose. I want you to smell the food. Bring the plate close to your nose if you have to, right? Or if you're preparing the food, perhaps even smell the cutting of the food and and the flavor that are being released and that you can smell. So look at your food, smell your food, and then take your fork, your spoon, bring the food to your mouth and then taste the food. For you to taste the full expression of your food, you need to chew. And that's the big part in binge eating or overeating is that we don't chew. Like we chew to the minimum amount so we can swallow and put the next bite in our mouth. So I want you to chew five to 10 times and then pay attention, like even close your eyes if you have to. When I teach mindfulness at the beginning, I encourage all the students to close their eyes. So close your eyes and then look for and seek for the flavor for every bite you're chewing. And then feel, feel the food in your mouth, feel how it feels. I know it's a lot of feels, but feels how it feels to swallow the food, right? And then put your stencil down and feel the food going down to your stomach, right? Take a breath and then grab your fork and then get another bite in, put your fork down and go through the same motion, That's mindful eating. Here's another tip for you. Put your fork and your spoon down between every bite. One of the most prevalent characteristics of non-mindful eater is that the fork or the spoon stays in their hand the whole time. So while they're chewing one bite, they're preparing the next bite And they're focused on wrapping the food on their fork, on their spoon. And then as soon as they've swallowed, it's not even down to the stomach. As soon as it's not in the mouth anymore, the next bite of food comes into the mouth. Is that you? I know that was me (laughs) for a very, very, very long time. So do this experience. Put your fork, your spoon down between every bite. And that's the relationship between mindfulness and food. And that's why mindfulness is a basic component of intuitive eating. We're not even talking about hunger, fullness, and diet rules. We're just talking about being mindful. And there is a relationship between mindfulness and women and the power that it has on us. And there's studies showing that both men and women experience the same benefit from mindfulness However, for women, it's at the greater degree. Now, when we look to see why that is, we realize very quickly that it's a parallel to women's mental illness. We see that there's more mental illness in men than women, specifically around anxiety and depression. And when we start digging, we realize, and and many of you will know this, we tend to ruminate more on our experiences and we tend to fixate on our experiences. Meaning that when something happened, we replay the event a lot in our head. We live in the past. And if we don't do that, we then move to the future and fixate about what is about to happen next with that event or what could happen next with that event. Where men trend to drop it faster. And if you are in a relationship with a man, a male, you've probably noticed that, right? So for us as women, there's more benefit because of what we tend to do. 
The next benefit of mindfulness for women versus men is the whole dieting culture, right? The dieting that we've experienced in our life, which again, we know to be more with women than men because we don't accept our body because diet culture pushes us an ideal teen body and we want to reach it. All the reason in the world we've dieted for a long time and dieting requires us to not be mindful. So this skill that was in us when we were young got, quote, taken away when we adopted restriction of our food. The consequence of that is that we are not in our body and it's reinforced with body shaming. When we shame our body verbally or mentally, one of the things we do is disconnect from our body because we don't think it's good enough or it's worth being. Therefore, it's very difficult for us to be mindful when we're not present with our five senses because we hate the body that carries the five senses. So that's another reason why mindfulness, in my opinion, benefit even more women than men, again, because of the event that tends to happen in a woman's life. So how can you start being more mindful in your life today? How can you be more present? So the fastest way to accomplish mindfulness for me is using your five senses. So right now, as I gave you earlier, the example of perhaps you're driving your car, use your five senses right now, right? So use your sight, pay attention of what's around you. Perhaps if you're driving in a country, count the number of trees that is around you. My teacher gave me that to do for a month. Every time I drove back and forth to work, back in the days I had like a 30 to 40 minute drive. I couldn't put music on. I had to count the trees. That was an experience I still remember today. So use your sight. Notice the colors around you, the trees, perhaps the colors of the vehicle around you, and then smell. What does it smell in your car right now? Or if you're doing the dishes, what is the smell of your soap? How does your dishes look like? How does your dishes water look like? Then move to your hearing. So what is the noise around you? Is there music? Is there TV in the background? Is there perhaps birds singing? I know for me, one of the reasons why I love silence is it's not really silent. I have trees around my condo and I have a lot of birds singing and I love the sound of birds. And I anchor myself on always looking for that sound around me. So the fastest way for you to implement mindfulness is being present to your five senses. And when you unconsciously disconnect from your five senses and you start being only two places, right? The past or the future, then notice, oh my God, I just lost track. I'm in the past or the future. Bring you back to your five senses. What do I feel? What do I smell? Perhaps what do I taste? What do I hear? And that's going to bring you back in the present. And then you're going to disconnect again, right? Perhaps because if you're doing the dishes, the kids are going to ask something out of you. Somebody is going to ring at the door. Then you're going to come back and do the dishes and start thinking about the past and the future. And then all of a sudden you're going to realize, whoa, how does the water feel in my hand? What does it smell like? What am I hearing? Just by asking those questions, you're going to bring yourself back in the moment. That's the easiest way and the fastest way for you to be mindful. So there you have it. Relationship between women, food, and mindfulness. So use your five senses. That's the exercise I am leaving you with as we end this podcast. Whatever you're doing right now, connect to your five senses. Keep noticing everything around your five senses until you disconnect and then bring yourself back to the five senses. That's the practice of mindfulness, in and out of mindfulness. So if you're ready to start your journey with 
mindfulness, mindful eating, and perhaps intuitive eating, go grab the intuitive eating guide, which is a free guide that I created to help you begin your journey of intuitive eating. And guess what I teach in that guide? Mindful eating. So it's in the show notes, stephaniedose.com slash 194. And next episode, 195, is going to be a treat for you. We have an expert, Chris Sandell from England, who's going to come and teach us about set point. I'm not going to tell you more, but I know a lot of you knows what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so set point is the mechanism into which the body regulate your weight. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. I love you. And I'm looking forward to hang out with you again.